Welcome back to The Morgan Show. I'm Sierra Burnett, and here at Morgan State University, fall sports are back. Starting with football, they did what some would say is the unthinkable, winning their first season opener on the road since 2012. Along with bowling getting their new coach and wrestling coming back after a 26-year hiatus. Let's get into it. As the MEAC football season approached, expectations for Morgan State remained low. The Bears were selected to finish fourth in the conference during the preseason, and fans were unsure what team might show up. Then the Bears proceeded down South I-95 to face Richmond and change the water cooler conversation. They upset the 16 ranked Spiders and started a brand new conversation. Who are these guys? Are they for real? Our reporter Lake Marion answered these questions and many others. Morgan State traveled to Richmond, Virginia and defeated the Richmond Spiders 17 to 10 on Saturday. The Bears held off a ranked FCS opponent and handed the Spiders their first season opening loss at Robin Stadium since it opened in 2010. The Bears snapped the Spiders' 17-game season opener winning streak. It was the first season opening road victory for the Bears since 2012. The Bears shocked students on campus, but not themselves. Coach Damon Wilson said his team was prepared and conditioned and possessed enough talent to knock off the Spiders. I mean, it's any time you get a win, and it was a good thing, whether the team is ranked or not, or not ranked. Uh, you played a very good FCS opponent, and we, was, we showed up well and played uh, a good game Saturday. Morgan players spent the summer months in classes and on the practice field preparing. That preparation paid dividends. The Bears' defense allowed an opening drive touchdown, but still kept the Spiders' offense in check for the remainder of the game. The Bears held the Spiders to just a field goal in the remaining three quarters. Morgan's defense sacked the quarterback five times, forced and recovered three fumbles, and secured one interception on the day. Linebacker Eric Hunter was named MEAC Defensive Player of the Week. He expressed how excited he was, but knows that he must still play consistently. It was exciting, but generally speaking, I was really humble about it, and I just know I want to do it again and do it on a consistent level. At the end of the day, my ultimate goal is to be playing football in December, so that's when I'll have the excitement and joy about it. The offense had its struggles. Quarterbacks Carson Baker and Dominique Anthony combined for 99 passing yards. They completed 7 of 13 pass attempts and one interception. Baker rushed for a touchdown and one interception through three quarters before being replaced with Anthony in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Despite their struggles, the offensive line played well enough to prevent them from being pressured and sacked often. Offensive lineman Dexter Carr Jr. and defensive lineman Elijah Williams both talked about how their groups handled the pressure. You know, I feel like we played pretty well, you know. We played tough, solid. We actually started two freshmen at, uh, we started Mo at left guard and Carr at left tackle. I mean, some freshmen, they had a pretty good first game. You know, we just got to keep working. You know, we got some older guys as well, so we just got to keep on bringing it together and moving forward the next game, just keep on stacking games. Just trusting our scheme, trusting our coaches and playing physical. So the coaches put out a great game plan, and they know the type of guys we got. As long as we play to our standard, we can stop anybody. The Bears received awards and accolades this week for their efforts. They were named FCS FedEx Groundwork Team of the Week. Next on the schedule is Akron. The Bears travel to Infocision Stadium for a 6 p.m. kickoff. Coaches and players also receive well wishes from around campus and social media. Morgan President David Wilson acknowledged the victory. Now that they got everyone's attention, the Bears will try and hold on to it. Lake, you traveled to University of Richmond for Morgan State season opening football game. What were your overall thoughts on the game? Well, Brandon, my overall thoughts of the game was the fact that the Bears defense dominated through all four quarters of the game. They gave up an opening drive touchdown, but after that, they only let up three points. I definitely agree. What do you believe the turning point was for Morgan State? Well, I feel like the turning point, there was multiple turning points uh, for Morgan State in the game. Uh, in, the, in the first half, they blocked the field goal that gave them momentum going into the second half. And in the second half, they got a strip sack and a muff punt, giving them a better field position. I definitely agree with that statement. What do you think Morgan State is going to do as they continue their season playing teams like Akron, Towson, and many more? Well, I feel like they're going to continue to do what they did against Richmond. They're going to continue to play strong defense, and their offense did struggle a little bit in the beginning, but they're going to continue to progress and do better. Thank you, Lake, for your thoughts. Thank you, Brandon. After a slow start to the season, volleyball was able to pick up a couple good wins at home. Here's Kelsey Jones with more on the team. Morgan State's volleyball team returns to action and has changed in more ways than just one. As the team opens its season, a new roster of five freshmen learning how to work together with a mix of eight returning players and transfers. In seven matches, the Bears have won two contests, including victories over Dartmouth and Farley Dickinson last week. Coach Ziamora Ortiz said it hasn't been easy, but the Bears are progressing with each swing. Um, we like to think of ourselves as a big tribe. 
And so we're really sacrificing for each other and working for each other than working against each other in those situations. So really it's bringing um, the experience of what the upperclassmen have and the physicality and the energy that the um, newcomers have and blending them both together. So. The Bears opened the season with more than half the team earning a new spot on the starting roster. Coach Ortiz recruited traditional freshmen and picked up more experienced players through the transfer portal. A new team means members must strike a quick balance between competition and camaraderie. Players say the early results are good. Senior setter Aaron Carpenter said competition during the pre-conference season will remind players that they have the collective skills to build a winning formula. She said they have to remain confident and talk to each other on the floor. We have a lot of girls with a lot of talent and a lot of them are young. So like uh, just getting, giving them like a ton of experience on the court, especially in this like pre-conference season, I think if we can set them more, like, we can really win games. Senior Daisy Sampson made a bold prediction for a Morgan team pick to finish seventh during the preseason. I see big things, you know, y'all saw the score. We were up there with them. So, I mean, if we just keep that energy, that team chemistry, we can be anyone and we're going to championships this year, for sure. The Bears have a long season ahead of them and will need the talents of players old and new if they want to prove naysayers wrong. In August, Morgan State's men's basketball team traveled to Paris and Belgium. They competed against professional European teams and toured the cities. It's a completely different team from last year, having only four returning players. Graduate student Brandon Griffin toured with the team. Here's his report. So one, for the student athletes, it's a great um, experience. It's, it's experiential learning um, at its best. Uh, they had the opportunity to come to a uh, different culture, a different place between Belgium and France, learn about those different cultures, play against some teams um, with different style of uh, basketball. Um, definitely, you know, ancient. Um, I'm pretty sure they have a lot more meaning. Um, you know, kind of reminded me of Call of Duty a little bit. Uh, so that was pretty cool. So, uh, I mean, just to see, you know, other parts of the world open my eyes. And a kid from Washington D.C., the inner city, Northeast, Ridge Park. You know, I know how much it's helped me to grow as a person to understand others. So I wanted these guys to, to get that opportunity. And I think they're, you know, making the most of it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I wanted to bring that to the players. I'm hoping that some of the players are gonna play in the NBA or get an opportunity to play here. With that being said, my goal is when I started this is, I want this to be a lifelong memory that this is something that they'll never ever experience again. And I think we've been able to do that this week. I feel as though this made us a team, because at first we were just going at everybody in practice, everybody was doing this in practice, but we actually seen what we got on the court against these pro teams here, and I think we're gonna be a great team. Morgan State's eSports team has high expectations as the season begins. Last season on March 8th through the 9th, the Bears captured the 2023 MEAC Esports Tournament Championship in Norfolk, Virginia. They defeated their conference rivals, Howard, Norfolk State, Maryland Eastern Shore, North Carolina Central, and Florida A&M. The tournament featured games such as Rocket League, Overwatch, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Mario Kart. The team also won individual games in Overwatch 2 and Mario Kart. Sophomore Dante Ryan II said he has good feelings about this season. He will return as part of last year's championship squad. Morgan State's women's bowling team has hired a new head coach, Alvin Franklin. 
Franklin replaces former Bears coach Tom Falbo, who retired in May. He will be the fifth head coach in the program. Franklin was born and raised in Baltimore. He described coming home to coach as humbling. Franklin has a track record of success. He won a championship with his former school, Ancilla College, in 2019. Now the Baltimore native hopes to guide the Bears to new heights in the MEAC. He will have a solid foundation to begin his tenure as coach, as MEAC Rookie of the Year, Jonna Hill, returns this season. Morgan State has added women's acrobatics and tumbling to its list of varsity sports going into the 2023-24 school year. Morgan State is the first HBCU Division I program to do so, and the third school in the state of Maryland altogether. Regina Smith was named Bears head coach. She has won over 30 national championships between college and high school competitions and collected over 50 top three finishes between cheerleading, dance, gymnastics, and mascots at the collegiate level. The Bears currently have 31 women on the roster and look forward to showcasing their abilities. Over the summer, Morgan State added two more sports to the school, including men's wrestling and women's tumbling. Michael, how do you feel about men's wrestling being added to the assortment of sports at the school? I feel like it's good, honestly, because people don't realize many like athletes, like former athletes, like Ray Lewis, they wrestled. A lot of football players, they wrestled. So that when they grab, they tackle you, they can bring you down to the ground and you get secured. All right. Cameron, how do you feel about women's tumbling being added to the school? I couldn't be excited more, my man. So women's tumbling has come to Morgan State for the first time ever. It's the first HBCU ever to have this tumbling team, the third team in the state of Maryland to have this team as well. I'm excited to see how they do this because we already have a successful and prominent cheerleading program since 2017, has been has notched in the NCAA championship for the past five years. They have brought back two gold medals and also released a couple All-Americans as well from that camp. All right. And Michael, how would you say to some people that think wrestling should not have been the sport that was selected? I don't think they play sports. And then in general, <laughs> I'm beyond. It's like I feel like they haven't played no sports, really, or like any physical sports mm -hmm. at that. All right. And Cameron, what would you say to people that may say tumbling should not have been selected as it's just like cheerleader? Um, I just think they're, they're just not ahead of the curve, which just don't see the future. Uh, once again, the women's program, the cheerleading program is probably one of the highest programs that we have throughout the whole entire uh, complex that we have in, in sports in Morgan State. In terms of winning, you can't really name three other programs in the school, men or women, that have the much accolades and gold that they do have. We also have a coach, an exciting coach in Regina Smith that has accompanied 30 years worth of gold and championships from the collegiate and high school level. This could go down as one of the best programs we have in the, in the next five years. All right. Thank you both for your thoughts. Morgan State senior pitcher Anaya Hunt was one of 40 players featured in the inaugural Minority Softball Prospects HBCU All-Star Game on Friday, June 2nd. Hunt gave up one hit and no runs during her time at the event. Here on The Morgan Show, we like to give appreciation to the former athletes that paved the way for our current athletes. With the Where Are They Now segment, here's Candace Beezer. Hello, my name is Candace Beezer, here with the Where Are They Now segment of The Morgan Show, and I have Miss Monique Liddell here, a former Lady Bear who played in 1997 to 2002. Thank you so much for being on the show, Miss Liddell. Um, so just for starters, how was your time here as a Lady Bear at Morgan? What were some of the accomplishments um, you achieved being in the Hall of Fame? That's a really big thing, especially being inducted in 2015. Like, that's amazing. So what were just some of the accomplishments you had? Uh, well, your career? First, first, I was there from 96 to 2000. I did oh, wow. it for a year. So it, it was the time frame was a little bit different than that. Um, but yeah, I, I think I was uh, I was one of a, a pretty large cohort of athletes coming out of the California area when I started at Morgan in 1996. Um, and uh, I, I think, you know, the, one of the things that was really, really important to me was attending an HBCU, especially coming out of Sacramento, California. We had kind of a guy who worked with us to really get us exposure um, on the West Coast to a number of the HBCUs. So um, I will say that, you know, my my time at Murray, I think, truly is the defining pieces of who I was as a person. I think that's really where I grew um, in my strength and my confidence as a Black woman. Um, and I really credit a lot of kind of my experience at Morgan, you know, to moving forward. While I was there, of course, um, we had great athletes. I mean, we were part of an amazing team. And 
certainly I wasn't necessarily, I don't think one of uh, the most talented kids um, that was to ever play at, at Morgan, but I was one of the hardest working people. And I think that too speaks to a lot of the success that I was able to have at Morgan and beyond um, was just kind of the work ethic that I put in. And I think ultimately, if you have the endurance to kind of continue working hard, you will have options in the end. And that's kind of how I see, um, you know, my journey kind of playing a role in, in where I am now and how I kind of move through my time there at, at Morgan. Mm. And I know that you um, coach now. So how did Morgan kind of shape you to uh, your current career of coaching a team? Yeah, I kind I started my, my coaching um, after my senior year. I still had a couple of classes. I was a mathematics major um, and um, that was not the easiest thing to do to go immediately from a teammate to a coach. But I also felt like one of the things that um, I really prided myself on was, was having a high IQ. Um, and my, I, I started coaching at Morgan, but I actually took a pause after that year once I graduated and played overseas. Um, in Luxembourg and continued to play as an athlete and then returned from overseas. And that's when I kind of moved into uh, that coaching career. But I think I learned early on that um, you have to be able to build relationships. Um, players play well when they know that their coach cares. Um, and while all the X's and O's are really, really important, um, I think it's also important to build that relationship to get the most um, out of any of your athletes. Um, and that is something that I've carried with me, even in my years of coaching um, to this day. I'm Sierra Burnett, and for all of us here at The Morgan Show, thank you for watching. If the dream ain't scary, gotta dream bigger. If it don't fit the mold, paint a bigger picture. I ain't never stopping, I'ma do it again. First race or the last, I'ma go for the win. And this is my time to get it, I ain't playing no more. So if they going against us, we declaring the war. If it hurts.